Uh, let me pray and, and we will begin. Let's pray. Uh, dear Gracious Father, I give you thanks. Uh, thank you for gathering your precious remnants uh, for this time of youth evangelism school. I pray that you would truly pour your grace upon every remnant and help them to truly live their lives uh, for the sake of this gospel and to be able to glorify you in everything, they do, everything that they do, Lord. Uh, break down all the forces of darkness and may you receive all the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Um, so, uh, so, continuing on from last week, uh, I'll be going over new life, new living uh, material. Last week I went over lecture one, and today I'll be going over uh, lecture two. Uh, the title of today's message is Salvation is Found in No One Else. So, I'm just going to write salvation, but the whole title is Salvation is Found in No One Else. And today's main scripture is Acts chapter 4, verse 12. So if you have your Bibles, um, turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 4, verse 12. I'll go ahead and read. It says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given, to, given among men by which we must be saved. Amen. Um, Acts chapter 4, verse 12 is... Um, one of the greatest confessions uh, that, that Peter made. After he healed the crippled beggar, right, he was persecuted, but regardless of the persecution, uh, he, he stood in front of everyone and he talked about the uniqueness of Jesus Christ, how Christ is the only way to obtain salvation. So remnants, I want you and I to really understand the blessing of salvation that God has given to you and I. Because when you and I enjoy this blessing of salvation, and when this blessing of salvation becomes your answer, you'll be able to relay this salvation to others. But if I don't enjoy it, and if this salvation doesn't become my answer, honestly, evangelism is gonna be very distant from your life. But I bless in the name of Jesus Christ that all of our remnants here will enjoy and find the greatest answer in the blessing of salvation so that you and I will be able to truly save the 237 nations and the 5,000 uh, tribes. Amen? All right. Um, so I'm gonna go with the flow of the message, the outline. It's gonna be very basic and very similar from last week's message. But once again, right, today is a new day. Today's March 4th, 2023. This day will never come again, right? And the working of the Holy Spirit right now is, is new. Right? God will pour his new grace upon you and I at this time. So the very first thing that you and I need to realize when it comes to uh, uh, talking about the blessing of salvation we have to understand man's original state. Uh, every time I go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ to people, Right. I always talk about how God created mankind. It's really important for us to let them know how God created everything. So I, I start out with the fact that God created the whole universe. Right? God created everything that you and I see. He said it with his words. That's why if you look at Genesis chapter 1, it says God said, God said, God said. So everything that you and I see, he said it and it was made. But when it comes to mankind, right? We were created differently. The very first thing that you have to realize when it comes to men's creation is Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. It clearly tells us that God created men and female in the image of God. He only created us as spiritual beings in his likeness. To go a little bit more towards the current messages, right? Because back then, we used to just end with this. Genesis 1, verse 27, 28. Now, if you look at the current messages, we, you know, pass to you at a few other verses, right? We, we need to know that we are created in the image of God, but at the same time, we have to realize that God, he breathed the breath of life into us, right? Into our nostrils, and the Bible says we became a living being. So we have a physical body, right? Because the Bible says he formed us from the dust of the ground. 
And the fact that he breathed life into us means we have a spiritual life plus a physical body. The reason why the spiritual life is so important is because God is spirit. In order for us to have a relationship with God, we need this spiritual life. And this is how God created us. Another verse that we use a lot nowadays is Genesis 2, 1 through 18. This is the blessing of the Garden of Eden. So the first two people created to be with God, Adam and Eve, right? They were created in the image of God. They had the breath of life. And they had the greatest blessing of enjoying God's presence, enjoying the blessing of wind. This is how God originally created us. But as you know from the Bible, a problem occurred. And this problem right, is mentioned in Genesis chapter 1. And Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, when Satan enters into the serpent, right, approaches Adam and Eve and deceives them, right, saying that if you eat of this fruit, you be like God, knowing good and evil. Satan's greatest deception. He made mankind to disobey God's covenant. We call this original sin. We call this the fundamental problem of man. I said this to you guys last week too, but many people know the story of Adam and Eve, right? Even non-believers have heard about the story of Adam and Eve. But the problem is they don't see this event, right? That this problem came down to all human race. That is why Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. If you go on in verse, I guess, skip the order, but if you look at Romans chapter 3, verse 10, it says, No one is righteous, not even one. Right? In God's eyes, no one is righteous. Everyone is born as a sinner. This is what we need to relate to people. Let them know how God originally created us. Let them know that there is a problem that occurred in the human race and that we are all descendants of Adam. And therefore, we are all born separated from God. We all have the problem of sin and curses and everyone belongs to Satan. This is a problem that we cannot solve. Why? Because in other words, this is It's a spiritual problem. But people in this world right now, they only look at what is visible to their eyes. They only look at the physical problems, right? They think about their emotional problems. They think about their mental problems. But they don't see the spiritual problem. Remember, the greatest problem in America isn't drugs, Right? It's, it's not violence. It's not murder. The greatest problem in America is what? Oh. It's a spiritual problem. Right? It's a spiritual problem of not knowing who God is. Right? People don't know about this problem. So you and I need to understand this. Everyone is suffering in this world because of this problem. If you don't understand this spiritual problem, right? You will suffer, right, as you belong to the devil. That is why so many people in this world fall into idol worship, right? And one of the greatest idols for a youth group, right, for, for the youth is what well, it could be studies. It could be friends. It could be sports, right? And the list goes on, right? Whatever video games, right? Those are some of the common things that a lot of our youth groups, right, a lot of the remnants, even our remnants who have the gospel are getting caught up with. Right? People are falling to idol worship. That's a spiritual problem. And then mental illness, right? Physical problems. And then eventually people leave this earth. But it doesn't just end with that one person's life. This curse goes down generation to generation to generation. 
I, I said this to you guys. I grew up in a non-Christian family. I, had, I grew up in a family where we had no religious background. But through my mother, right, she became the first believer in my family. And eventually our whole family was gospelized. Right? And now my kids, and I, I'm praying that, you know, generation after generation that this gospel will continue on. Right? That all the curses that started from Genesis chapter 3 has ended through Jesus Christ. Therefore, let's understand how we were created. Let's understand the problem. And let's understand God's solution. The only solution that God has given to us. Is Jesus Christ who came as a true prophet. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is God's method. This is God's solution to this spiritual problem that you and I cannot solve. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. Christ came as the true priest to set us free from the law of sin and death. There's no way for us to come out of this state, right? We're all destined to die and to suffer. But Christ came as the true priest, right? And he set us free. First John chapter 3, verse 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Christ came as a true king. We need to understand this. You know, this, this past week, uh, I, I went out to the field to evangelize. I won't give any names, but this one remnant said, when I go out and share the gospel, I give really long messages, right? I won't say who, right? But someone said that. And then, but I'm not sure if this is a coincidence, but I actually, I was, I was teamed up with this remnant, right? While we went out to the field. So I told this remnant, right? I know a lot of the youth kids, right? You guys are so trained, right? To give like a one minute gospel presentation, right? And I said this to this remnant. The one person that I meet in the field, I want to accurately share the gospel message. I want to give all these scripture evidences, right? So that this person will know that it's not my words, but it's all written in the Bible, right? Because the Bible is our source of truth, right? We live according to the Bible. So I just want to relay the words of God, right? And then he said, okay, right? So I got it, right? So we went out into the field, right, to evangelize. I want our remnants. I said this last week, but I'm going to say it one more time. I want you guys to really pray that God will open your spiritual eyes to really understand the way of salvation. Don't just memorize it. But really ask God, God, open my spiritual eyes to see the dying field and how the way of salvation, this message that we heard for the longest time, that it won't just be head knowledge, but this is the message that the field needs. See how urgent this gospel message is in my field. Pray for that. This is the only solution that God has given. You know, this is all what? Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Right? Jesus is the Christ. We don't need anything. We just need Jesus to be the Christ. He came to solve the, the absolute problem that we can't solve on our own. That is why God sent Jesus. Right? Then, how can you... Then how can you receive? Then how can you receive the salvation, right? So if you understand how God originally created us, if you understand the problem, the root problem of all problems, you understand the fact that God gave us the solution only Jesus Christ. Then how can a person receive this now? The Bible tells us in John chapter one verse one. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, you have the right to become 
children of God. The way to become God's children is for us to believe, right? Is to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Is to accept it, right? Another scripture. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. It says, believe with your heart and confess with your mouth and you are saved. That's the key. I believe we all became saved children of God because someone shared this message to us, right? You guys weren't born understanding this. Someone, right, understood this message and relate this message to you guys. Same with me. I became a Christian. I became a child of God because someone relayed this content to me. And I decided to accept this by the grace of God. God gave me the grace for me to believe in this. This became believable. I came to realize, wow. So this was my state, huh? Man, this is where all my problems began. There's no way for me to solve this problem. Therefore, God gave me the solution. And I accept this solution. And now all I have to do is just receive Jesus into my heart. So here uh, on this actual outline, uh, it gives you the acceptance prayer. Um, I know this is being recorded, right? Is this message being recorded? Right? So for anyone might be listening to this for the first time, I will just read the acceptance prayer. So whoever is listening to this message for the first time, if you can really understand this, wow, this is how God created me as a spiritual being, to be with them, right? But we lost hold of the relationship with God because of sin, because of Satan who came to Adam and Eve. But God didn't just leave us in this state. God didn't just leave us to the point where we will suffer for the rest of our lives. God, he gave us hope, right? He gave us an opportunity to go back to how God originally created us. But the only method is through Jesus Christ, who came as a true prophet, the true priest, and the true king. And when we receive it into our hearts, you and I can become a child of God. It's that simple right god made it simple all you have to do is just believe in this fact right so i'm going to read this um acceptance prayer you guys are all saved children of god amen right but um why don't you guys just repeat this with me sounds good all right dear loving god i thank you for your amazing love and your complete plan of salvation now I know I am a sinner and I confess my sins before you. I open my heart to you. Please come in and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me salvation. Help me to live from now on, obeying your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's the way for a person to accept Jesus, is to make that personal confession, right? Acknowledging who I am, acknowledging my spiritual state before I accepted Jesus Christ, and acknowledging that Jesus is the only way to salvation, and inviting him into your heart as well as your heart. With that in mind, last point, there are some key, there are some key verses uh, that you and I must uh, always remember. So as children of God, you have to always remember 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 through 13. What this is, is about having the assurance of salvation. Right? The key content of this verse is, he who has the Son of God has eternal life. God gave us eternal life and this eternal life is found in who? Jesus Christ. So have the assurance of salvation. Know who you are. 
your identity cannot change. Once you're a child of God, you are always a child of God. There's some scripture verses I already mentioned, so I'm just going to just write down just a few. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. A very important Bible verse that you and I should know, right? It says, uh, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? You have to know that you are God's temple. You are the church. This building becomes a church because of us believers who are gathered together for worship, right? I want you and I to realize I am the church and that the Holy Spirit dwells within me. I'll give you one more scripture verse. John chapter 14, verse 26 through 27. It talks about how the, the counselor, the Holy Spirit is with us. And you know what's so amazing about this verse? It says this. I'm just going to read verse 26. It says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. We have the Holy Spirit working upon our lives. The moment you and I have become his, ch his child. I want our remnants here to really realize how precious you guys are. You guys are so precious. To go back real quick, just to reference Acts chapter 4, verse 12. After Peter made this confession that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Eventually, 5,000 people came to believe in this message. So one person named Peter, right, impacted that whole field. I believe the remnants in your field, because of you, one remnant in your field, many people will come to understand that Jesus is the Christ, that there is salvation in only Jesus Christ. I pray and I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will be that main figure to be able to enjoy this wonderful blessing. Let's pray. Dear gracious Father, I give you thanks. Thank you for the blessing of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ, and giving us new life and allowing us to live each and every day with the blessing of salvation, knowing that you are with us and realizing that you are always working within our lives. Help us, Lord, as we walk our covenant journey uh, to never be deceived by the world, but to influence the world as we proclaim the gospel of Jesus. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.